Hello everyone, Anthony here with episode 4 of creating a modular blockchain from scratch. And today we're gonna left, we're gonna continue rather where we left off previous episode, where we uh, created the key pairs, including private keys, public keys, signatures, uh, addresses and all that good stuff. And before we actually can continue with implementing the exciting stuff, which is the blockchain structure itself, where we will add blocks, validate blocks, uh, maintain a list of headers and so on for syncing and uh, yeah, actually the core functionality of the blockchain rather. We need to do something first because I was lying in bed yesterday evening and uh, I always reflect a little bit on what I'm going to do the next day. And I was thinking on uh, the next episode of this series and we are telling everybody that we're creating a modular blockchain. But a matter of fact, let me open up block real quick, uh, block. A matter of fact, we have a couple issues. Um, we have encode binary and decode binary, which basically will encode a block to bytes and decode a block from bytes. But if we want to change this implementation, we can't. Uh, we need to hard code it in here. So if somebody else uses our tools or chain, and they want to use, uh, for example, um, proto buffers. They can't. So we need to fix it, make it more modular and generic, need dynamic, dynamic. So basically, also hash right here is a bad practice because the problem with this is we have our own implementation of it, uh, which is a simple SHA, two hundred fifty six of the header, but uh, maybe we want to do it double SHA or a triple SHA or even uh, a SHA 512, we can't. So that's no Gucci. And we also have another issue, which is, um, so the hash of the block is the hash of the header. The problem is the block chain also have transactions, right? So it's right here, we have transactions. And if somebody wants to tamper with those transactions, they can because we don't hash them. So we're gonna fix that issue also. So let's get started. First of all, let's delete all things we don't need. Um, this has function, let's comment it out. So we don't need the nonce. Uh, we to enable to fix the transaction uh, tampering issue, we're gonna add something like a uh, data hash, which is gonna be the hash of all the transaction data. A matter of fact, this can be more explicit. And we, yeah. So let's first of all, the same thing maybe for transaction actually. So also let's expand a little bit of the block because um, we need to have a validator field. Uh, crypto, please, public key. And we need to have a signature. It's basically this. Yeah. So uh, we need to have a validator, which is a public key and a signature. And the reason for this is if later on our consensus elects a leader and uh, that leader has a privilege to uh, propose blocks into the network, it needs to basically sign the block with his private key. And uh, we need to have the public key, this his uh, public key and its signature in order to ver verify it. And the same thing for transactions, we want to have a public key. And public key and Visual Studio is gonna freak out like this. And we also need a signature. Let's copy it real quick. Like this. Same thing for transactions. So if a client uh, makes a new transaction, it needs to sign the data with its private key and it needs to leave its footprint, which is a signature, so we can verify it. Um, okay, so. Yeah, so let's uh, start making this has function more generic. Um, we're gonna say 
and we are using Golang um, 1.18, so which means we can use generics, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. So types, man, I'm so rusty. Uh, types and hash. So in instead of basically hard coding it, we're gonna do something neat. We're gonna say hash takes in a hasher, which will be of type block. And let's first create this thing. Hasher. Uh, come on, man. Whoa, whoa, what's happening here? Uh, T, any interface. Hash. T. Type spent hash. So a hasher is very simple. Uh, it's an interface which takes in a T. It's going to hash that type and it will return a hash. So basically with this thing, we can, uh, with, this, with this interface, we can uh, hash everything we want. And we can make our own implementations uh, if we want, as many as we want. So block. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say if beep and hash is zero. Which basically means that if the ha the cache, the hash cache, is not set, then we gonna calculate it. So it's the hasher dot hash b, and we return b and hash. Yep, 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 yep. Can delete this. Uh, let me think. Okay. Um, so what we're gonna do? We're gonna make all default things for uh, default uh, hashers for everything we're gonna use. And if people wanna extend it, they can basically create their own. Um, let's go back to hashers and create a block hasher, which struct uh, and we're gonna say block hashes hash b block type spent hash um, okay so we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna hash the header and for all our own implementation, we're gonna use something very simple uh, and able to encode this, and it's gonna be a GOP encoding. Uh, it's maybe not the best, but it's something that's simple and it's included in the standard library and it works perfectly fine. First of all, let's make a buffer and make an encoder. Encoder of the buffer, and we say yeah uh, the block print header. Oh wait, what I'm gonna do? I was thinking about something. Let's just finish this up real quick. Uh, no, let's panic. Otherwise, we will hash two hundred. Yeah, some. Yeah, button bytes. And we return the types and hash h. All right. Double check. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, I'm thinking, yeah, that was what I'm gonna do. So basically, right now, the headers is basically uh, a copied version of a header, and we want a pointer. And the reason for this is, uh, later on, if we're gonna maintain a list of headers, we don't wanna maintain a list of copies of headers, we wanna maintain a list of pointers. That's much more memory effective, efficient. 
Okay, cool. Let's open up the test because I think... Yeah, exactly. Let's delete everything. And... Okay, the next thing we need to fix is the encoding and decoding of the block. We don't really need it right now, but we're gonna do it anyway, at least the beginning. So for block, I was thinking, let's say we have something like block decode. Adosh. And instead of hard coding, we say it takes a reader and a an decoder of type block. And then we're going to say return. Decoder and decode the reader and itself, so the block. And the same thing for encoding. Uh, encode, which is a writer. Enc encoders. Encode. Writer. Of course, it's complaining because we don't have this. So let's create this. Uh, let's call it encoding but go type package. The reason why we're passing in writer, I opened writer and I opened reader instead of basically returning the bytes is because we don't, we, do, we want to stream it. It will make more sense later on. So we can basically pipe this into a connection and everything. Uh, or rather we can pipe a connection into these encoders instead of um, buffering up the memory itself. So yeah. The same thing like the hasher type, right? So we have uh, interfaces which takes in a type and then we can say, give us a writer and this thing and we will encode it. And the same thing for decode. So if you go to block, it's all working fine. So we don't need to make the actual implementations of this. Uh, we can do it later on, but we still have this already uh, laid out. And I'm thinking what the next step is going to be. The next step is, let's test this a little bit, basically. Uh, and already I think we're going to have some issues. So normally I would say, for example, for testing, I would do new block. The problem is because we changed this header thing, this will be nil. So let's do something new block. We want a header and we want transactions. Transactions takes X 
Yeah, sometimes Visual Studio Code is fucking my Vim commands uh, up. And the reason for that is because if I go uh, from insert mode and I want to go to uh, uh, insert mode, when I go to normal mode, I ju just press GG. And sometimes when I do this, Visual Studio Code thinks I want to type something and it type hints a function and everything is fucked up. But it is what it is. Um, we should learn to live with that. Test hash block. So instead of doing this, we're gonna say, a matter of fact, I have a better idea. Let's make a helper function. Random block. And I think we should say height. So we could make random blocks for a given height that can come in handy later on. So let's make the headers. Timestamp um, time now Unix nano. The data hash. Uh, let's leave it open for now. Transaction. And I'm thinking, should we make this pointers to transactions or should we leave it like this? Questionable, questionable. Um, data. Uh, bytes, let's make it full. And then we're gonna return new block header slice of transactions with this transaction in it. So now I can say B is a random block, random block rather, uh, height zero, and do, let's print it out, leave it hash, and we need a block hashes. You see, so that's exactly how it works. Instead of calling hash and have the functionality internally, we call hash and we put in our block hashes or whatever hash we want, it doesn't matter. And it will uh, hash the block. Yeah, let's test this real quick. Okay, cool, so this is our hash. Uh, nice, so that's already good. Okay. The next thing, let me quickly sip of my coffee real quick. Delicious, not gonna lie. So, um, we need, we need, we need, we need, we need something very important, which is this block sign uh, wait first of all let's do this um, let's open a transaction all right let's do it in transaction first so day x transaction sign um, we sign this with a brief key private key, we will return uh, crypto open signatures with an error. Um, say error is brief key and sign this can data.
and then we're going to say the x.public key is basically the brief key.public key and the transaction and signature is going to be the signature like this and return no. Oh, wait. Uh, sign. We don't need to return the script open signature, to be honest. Uh, let's return an error like this. And uh, return R. Wait, what's going on? Um, what, what the hell? Um, expect a declaration. Sign is uh... why is it not type hinting? Hello, keep it brief key. Data, it's actually fine. Oh my god! <laughs> nice, nice, nice hinting by the way, Visual Studio. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so we can sign the transaction and let's basically open up. Uh, do we have a test for transactions? We don't. <clears throat> Excuse me. Transaction test open go. Um, Okay, uh, so we're gonna make uh, a data. We're gonna put it in here and actually do we really we don't need this, we can actually do this. And um, we need to have a private key, that's no problem. Uh, crypto and new. And again, Visual Studio is not Generate actually, I think if I remember, yeah, exactly. Um, so that's our private key, that's our transaction, and we're gonna do assert t brief uh, key. No, 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 we're gonna say the x and sign, we're gonna give him the brief key, and that should give no errors. Yeah, yeah. And then we should say assert but not nil. T, T, expand signature actually. So we want to make sure we have a signature. And then, to be honest, I'm also going to say, um, wait. Yeah, so that's it. So we, we make a, um, 
we make a transaction, we sign it, and we want to make sure that there is no error and that the signature is not null. Matter of fact, let's go to terminal. Let's make test and see if everything keeps working. And it is, but I want to do a little adjustment, make file. Okay, so everything is working. And we also want to do something else with this transaction so we can sign it. We also want to make a function called tx transaction verify, which is an error. And then we say, um, gonna say return the expense signature wait we're gonna say if the expense signature is nil we're gonna say return uh, the x has no signature yeah <coughs> excuse me so we verify we say if the transaction pin signature is empty We say TX has no signature, and maybe we should make more like this. Oh, please. And then we say return. No, we can't. Yes, we can. No. We're going to say if the X print signature, print verify. Uh, yeah, signature print verify. And this basically needs a pubkey and data, the X print public key expand again the expand data and this so if we if it fails we're gonna return error f invalid transaction signature otherwise we don't know and everything is good so let's test this um, tests uh, verify transaction help me like this we're gonna sign it and um, Assert no. Verify. So basically, this should be okay. So we create one, we sign it, and it should be verified. The other thing I'm actually concerning is test transaction verif test verify transaction. Okay, cool. Okay, this works. But now I want to do something special. I want to say uh, other brief key. Uh, generate the brief key. And I want to do the x and public key. This other brief key and public key. So I'm tampering. I'm tampering with the public key. And I want to assert that it's not going to be nil because I want an error to expand verify. See, that's working. That's fine. So what did we do here? So we basically create a transaction, we sign it, and we verify it, and it's all perfectly fine. But then we create a new private key, and we uh, tamper the existing transaction, and we put in the new public key which totally not signed that uh, transaction. And then we say, please assert this and it cannot be nil. So this should be an error and it's all working fine. Cool. So we are done for transaction. Now we need to hash and everything, but I don't think we need to do it right now. And actually for block, 
We need to do the same for block. Um, yeah, we need to do the same for block. So the same thing. We want to sign the block. Going to return a signature. And we want to sign it. Let me open up this section because I'm choking a little bit. Uh, yeah. So we want to sign this with a priv key. Crypto private key. Um, so we're going to say say error is going to be priv key and sign. Okay, right. So now. we need to make a helper function. Yeah. So we're gonna say something like func b block uh, hashable fields, maybe, or hashable data, which will return the byte slides. And this is gonna be uh wait, 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 wait. This is gonna be it's gonna be the 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 bytes of the data that needs to be signed and needs to be hashed. And then we encounter the issue that we have a hasher, which all right, I have a good idea to be honest. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Let's do block. Let's do this. Uh, header bytes or header data. Um, let's call it header bytes. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about the way we're going to do this. I think it should be fine. Uh -huh. So in, in Hasher, we basically abstracted the way how uh, the hashing algorithm works. But we don't abstract the way we come from the structure to bytes. And maybe that's something for later on. Let's just say uh, new encoder. Encoder, please. Encoder. The buffer. And, um, this and then we return basically buffpunt bytes okay and then we can go to our hasher and modify it a little bit and say we know it's a block and we say encoder bytes buffer uh, we don't need this thing just gonna say um, basically just abstracting the way uh, hashing is working not abstracting the way we come to bytes that's maybe for something else for another interface in the future so sum 265 <clears throat> beepent header bytes
or we should call it header data. Uh, maybe header data is, is, is more is better as function name. I'm gonna share. Let's call it header data to be honest. Go to hash it back again. Okay. Uh, and then we can say what would you, do we want to sign? We want to sign deep in header data. Panic here. No, we don't panic here. We made an issue once again. We return the errors and we say, because the signature will be embedded in the block, so we're going to return the errors. Yeah. And then we say b.validator is priv key to public key, and then b.signature is say exactly like this. No errors to be returned anymore. And then we gonna make the verify function. Verify. Where we say if B and signature is nil. Alright, and then we say if b punt signature punt verify the block punt validator and the oh yeah um, if you want to verify this block we're gonna say b punt header data yes please why is it not type hinting I'm gonna do it myself and then we're gonna say uh, block has invalid signature and we return no. Let's open a block test. Test hash block. Actually, test hash block. That's 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 a useless a useless test. Um, we're gonna call it test sign block wait and actually we can use this and then we're gonna say b punt sign let's make a private key crypto generate private key and we're gonna say sign brief key Make sure this doesn't return an error. And then we're gonna make sure actually uh, that the signature is not empty. Yeah. Okay, that's working. And maybe we can make a test for actually we could do anything inside here to be honest. But let's not do it. Uh, test block verify. Verify, verify block. And verify is basically not the same as validate. Don't get me wrong. Verify is just basically verify that the signature of this block and the validator public key that this validator signs that block. That's the only thing we're gonna test here. It's the only thing it's 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 verify is doing. If you really want to validate a block, we need to have the blockchain and, and, and the storage and everything. But that's for next episode. Test verify block. So we have a block, a random block. We have uh, we sign it, and then we're gonna say uh, a certain no even verify ok 
okay and then we're gonna do the same trick where we say uh, open up transaction pass basically okay I'm gonna do the same thing like this and we say we can verify and that should be that should return an error okay Okay, cool. Uh, we could test this more in depth uh, by saying, okay, we are testing that if the public key is altered, but what happens if the data is al altered? So why do we... Uh, we can do something like this. Beep and height, for example, is 100, 100. And then we say, okay, let's verify this again. Um, this should be not nil, right? Okay, see? Because basically, well, let's let's just print it out and then you can see what happens. Uh, make test. So basically, block has an invalid signature and the reason for this is because, yeah, we signed the block and the height is zero and now we are altering it, so uh, it's, it's, it's false, so that's good. Wait, like this. So now we have something uh, waterproof and that's good because we need this for later on. Uh, let's make a test right quick. Yes, okay, cool. Let's recap. Do we have everything that I want to do? I think so, I think so. Yeah, so let's recap. So we basically abstracted the way that hashing of blocks works so now instead of having this code encapsulated we are uh, dependent of we have no dependency we just need to uh, inject a hasher and uh, that will just take care of hashing so we implemented the default hasher uh, default block hasher with just the SHA-256 uh, of the header data and uh, I know all of basically all other chains do a double SHA but yeah we can, like I said, uh, we are just prototyping, mocking things out. We can change things later on. No issue with that. Um, another thing we did is basically uh, refactor the way decoding and encoding works. The same thing as hashing. So now we just pass in a decoder and an encoder. And that will take care of all of that. Those implementations are still missing, but that's for later on if we really, really need to send those blocks over the network. We added verification and signing of those blocks and the same for transactions. So I think we are Gucci to start making the blockchain itself, which is another module that we're gonna append to our server. And um, that's something for the next episode, but to give you a little heads up, the blockchain structure is gonna maintain a list of headers and it's going to have a storage, which will be an interface. It's going to have a validator, a block validator, which is also an interface. So we can uh, extend and adjust things exactly the way we want it. So that's for next episode. If you really like this video, give me a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave some questions uh, if you see that I make a mistake or something is not clear please leave a comment and uh, leave a comment a question in the comments oh my god and um, yeah see you in the next one thanks for watching bye bye